Well, as my outlook has so kindly informed me, it is 1.30 and it's time for how I went from my librarian to a system specialist with Gina Monti. I want to once again thank our sponsors, Emerald Data Networks, Equinox Open Library Initiative, and Mobius Libraries. Gina, here you go. Yep. Uh, it's starting to feel it. It's the end of the conference. So. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, it, I think it's actually quite interesting that I have this uh, right after Dawn's presentation. So hopefully we could have some overlapping things. A uh, couple up here. Um, so, uh, yep, I do have memes in this one, uh, as promised, like I did for my UX uh, presentation that I did on Tuesday. So you have those to look forward to. Um, and this is like kind of like my love letter to the Master's of Library Science degree. I got it in 2014 from Southern Connecticut State University. Uh, and since then, I got a certification. So it's not necessarily like um, uh, like an associate's degree. It's like pretty much uh, six, six uh, courses that I took over at Liberty for app development. Um, and uh, I just wanted to kind of like chronicle the story of me going from working in the libraries to now I'm like working in systems. So my uh, specific job title is Evergreen Systems Specialist. I've been working with Bibliomation. I'm going on my third year now, I think. Um, and Bibliomation is a consortium that's based out of Connecticut. We have a good amount of libraries there, not all of them being public. There's some special and some school uh, libraries that have joined us as well. And I just wanted to talk about the experience. Um, I think for the most part, a lot of people in Evergreen, especially in that community, uh, kind of like went from doing library stuff and then moving into a type of role that's like more specialized, uh, which is kind of interesting because when you think about how library work is and you, you don't typically like hear a lot of people um, saying that they have a very, very specific master's degree in something, um, at least for me, until I learn about the MLS or the MLIS, if you have that as well. Uh, so it's uh, it's interesting going from doing all that public service type of work and then going into systems. A lot of the times, and I'm sure some of you who are here today um, who work in systems or have a similar type of background like me, you tell like your peers, you're out with your friends and they're like, how did you go from doing this to this? Uh, so I will tell you. All right, so this is a photo of me on my last day as a librarian. Uh, I do look back on those days fondly, uh, mostly because I really missed that BBA cutout. Uh, and secondly, I think that was a bit after the summer reading time. And I was working with young adults. Uh, if you could see the Y New Books section, that, that was a collection that I was uh, responsible for. Uh, before then, I was doing things in children's. I was a reference librarian, I think, for the longest time out of my tenure. I've been working in libraries for about like eight or nine years at that point. Uh, came in pretty young. Um, I was like 19 when I got a library assistant position. Um, tried to move on to getting my master's after my bachelor's was over. And that was kind of like my life. Um, it's I think being a librarian is an interesting sort of thing because a lot of people say that you know, oh, I work in like customer service or I work in, um, you know, the food industry or restaurant industry. And I think being a librarian in many ways, because there's so many roles that you have to do, anybody, especially if you're in a public atmosphere, could just come in and ask you a question. So uh, for me, I always thought it was kind of like being um, sort of in customer service, but also um, trying to work in this place that was like the community living room. Um, that was something that one of my bosses told me from a while ago, and it stuck with me for some time. So uh, I was at a point in time when um, I was trying to find like what the next thing was for me in the career ladder. Um, and I didn't really know like what was available. It just seemed, you know, working in libraries pretty much my whole life, uh, my whole professional life at that point, uh, then moving to something like director or like a manager of some sort, the, like that type of, uh, track was the only thing that was available to me. So I was putting in a lot of resumes at the time, getting interviews, but not getting that particular job. And I was just kind of at a point where I'm like, oh, I don't really like know what else to do here. Um, so I talked to my supervisor at the time and uh, she said to me, well, uh, we invested, well, you invested a lot in us uh, because I ended up working in the same library that I uh, went to high school in and did my internship there was like, I think their first intern. And they said, well, we'll invest in you too. So we'll try to allocate some more responsibilities to you. Um, 
I caught Dawn's presentation a bit towards the latter half, uh, and she mentioned that uh, sometimes it's just being like the person going on the initiative of, hey, could you know, I could take on more projects, et cetera. So it basically did the same thing for me. Um, so there was a leadership conference uh, in Connecticut. They hold it, I think, just one day out of the year, usually in the fall. And it's a mini conference, kind of like set up like what we have, where we have a keynote. Uh, there's like a small breakout session. And then it ends with like a closing in which it's like a Q&A panel with um, managers and leaders. Uh, so the way that they split it up was they had like new managers and leaders and like those who are more experienced with it. And a lot of the times we were asking this question of how do I become or well, not how do I become, but like what made you decide to become a leader or a manager? I never really thought about it as a choice. So I went back to the drawing board, uh, talked to some mentors at the time who, who were helping me out um, during my free time with just getting into the next point of my career. So, oh, well, you know, you could definitely specialize. Uh, so just to end this whole ramble, um, Biblimation had two positions that were available. One was a position I have, and the second was a cataloger position. I applied to the cataloger position because I felt like I probably had experience that way. And the interview I felt was me asking them questions more than them asking me questions. Cause I was like, oh, you go to a conference every year for like the summer, that's really cool. Uh, what's it like working in just an office? Cause I never had an office job where people wouldn't just like randomly come in uh, that was open to the public. Um, so I asked them a lot of questions. I didn't get the job, uh, but they asked me to come back for the other position after I asked Carl, our director, uh, you know, it's okay. Like it, it, it didn't work out, but I'm actually interested in just talking to you more about what it's like to work in a consortium because I, I would be like more curious. So, um, and that's what I did with a lot of people who um, I had interviews with and they didn't offer me the position, but I just asked like, if we have like a follow-up of what things I could improve during the interview process, blah, blah, blah. So um, then I was asked to uh, apply for the other position. Uh, one of the questions that Jessica, my supervisor asked me was, why didn't you apply to a systems specialist position? I said, oh, I have like a severe um, imposter syndrome, uh, <laughs> which I probably shouldn't have said, but they still um, accepted me in and I, I learned a lot in that job. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about me, I kind of want to take um, experience that I learned as a librarian and how that applies to information systems. Uh, which is like a job that I have now. Um, though it is an information systems job, I don't just work with the system directly. Um, it's a lot of uh, help desk tickets, database stuff, um, you know, doing programming, especially customizations like the OPAC that we did with the bootstrap version was a big part of that. Uh, but there's a lot of different things you have to do too. So if you have taught computer classes as a reference librarian, those like, Sometimes painful uh, classes you have to teach with patrons who come in and they don't know how to use a computer and you have to start at the very, very, very basic foundation and build up from there. Um, you can definitely train people in how to use software. Uh, I think that those reference one-on-one -on -one classes definitely have helped me a lot when it came to communication and teaching people how to do basically anything. Um, so those are those very coveted spaces that uh, are, are helpful in that way. If you could design input for your library website, that was one thing that I did. Um, we had uh, to just look at the website that hasn't been touched in three years or something like that with our webmaster and talked about things that frustrated the patrons. There's like our user experience type of um, design input that you can do. You could definitely uh, design software as well. If you can organize informative programs, you could host a webinar. Have webinars are really, really big in what we do to educate and also train um, library staff and new features, upgrades, et cetera. If you could design flyers, you could design infographics, brochures, et cetera, which um, sometimes is not necessary for the job, but something that I like to do. Um, that uh, In the lightning talks yesterday, I actually shared a brochure and a online handout of the new OPAC when we had that coming out so they could distribute that to their own patrons. Um, if you could supervise volunteers in something, especially if you've done a lot of like summer reading stuff like I have, you could definitely lead a project. Um, sometimes that you can even could be having volunteers uh, do stuff for programs. Uh, if you could create statistical reports, especially with a reporter, you could learn basic SQL uh, and we'll get back to that in a moment. 
Uh, reporters especially could be like kind of scary for some people who don't really know like Boolean terms like um, and or, uh, you know, we have to think about the alligator thing where this eats the bigger number greater than and less than and all that. Um, but if you could use it with a reporter, you can definitely uh, learn some basic SQL for sure. If you're good at in writing instructions, you can definitely do documentation. Uh, documentation is a very, very big part of what the Evergreen community does. It's a big part of like any software, really. Um, I feel like documentation is always going to be sometimes like a quarter to half of the job. You have to write things down in order for you to remember them for next time and also have it for um, uh, people who might be onboarding for the next position, etc. Um, and also distributing that to your own staff as well and your own clients. And if you understand software from the user and uh, the end user perspective, you can definitely uh, communicate uh, with clients effectively. And I think this is a very big one. Uh, so I kind of want to focus on that for a moment. When I went to the Connecticut Library Association conference, I think in like 2017, or even earlier than then, there was this one panel that I just randomly walked into about law librarians. And one thing that they said to me, which I always remember, is anyone could walk into a law library and it's their job to explain whatever it is that they're asking for on a seventh grade reading level. So I always look at that as like a basis. You have to have like a common ground or vernacular, so to speak, of how you're able to explain things. So. Earlier, if you went to the uh, 3.9 um, highlights, uh, th that particular session, um, Andrea talked about jargon that um, she spelled out at the beginning of that particular uh, session. And I think that's a lot of uh, what we you know, do as like systems people is we talk jargon back to each other, especially if you have like an internal staff. Um, so at times like going from a public space where I have to be careful of absolutely everything that I put out there, making sure that nothing was uh, homophobic, sexist, ableist, um, you know, uh, in inclusive, I'm sorry, exclusive and being inclusive and also uh, making it so that everybody was able to understand it. Like that was painstakingly, I would spend a lot of time having to proofread those things. And if you can do that, you can definitely um, do that uh, more so on like a private level. All right, first meme is up. Okay, so I think the MLS is more than a librarian position for sure. Uh, data management, there was someone who I had come in to do a panel uh, for community library, I'm sorry, uh, community colleges, I meant to say community colleges. And she um, was someone who got an MLS and then she also learned uh, data management. I can't remember what the uh, associates, associates agree that she got afterwards, but now she's like a head of... Um, like a data management, like head librarian um, at that, at a, I'm sorry, at a separate entity, but she also comes in as an adjunct professor at a community college. So um, that's something that you could also look into for specializing. Uh, if you are a system librarian, you're going to be thinking about networking. A lot of colleges and standalone libraries uh, do rely on system librarians for sure. Uh, one of the positions I was looking into actually was a system librarian, and I actually spent time on LinkedIn just uh, cold messaging people. I was like looking up people from all over the country who do system librarian work, which isn't too many, but you will find them out there and just like send the messages saying like, hey, I'm interested in knowing more about this. Like, so what, what does it take to um, become a systems librarian? Uh, law librarian, uh, I know that you do have to have a law degree, so that could be out of reach for some people. That's a, a long time that you're gonna be putting into a JD, but uh, that is a very necessary thing uh, that patrons need for sure. Um, maybe even social worker. A lot of the times we think we're social workers. Uh, you could have, you know, people who um, are kind of like in between uh, residencies. They could be homeless, um, just kind of wandering around. You could even have um, children come in who might not have uh, the best type of support at home, etc. Um, though there are different criteria that different libraries have for this. Um, I do uh, see at least like a trend of some libraries, especially large urban libraries, hiring social workers as well, uh, because there is a need for that. So it is like an ever evolving thing. And that was just a few things I wanted to grab from there. Um, if you can't read that, it says uh, for the meme, librarians checking the Dropbox return books, less than half what I hoped for, which I feel is <laughs> kind of like how it, how it went for me sometimes. 
All right. So for my position, do you need professional development? Yeah, I think you're going to need professional development a lot of the times, even if you want to stick to becoming a, li uh, a librarian on like a different type of role or position, um, or if you want to move into something else. So the best thing that I could say when it came to learning programming, find out what your learning process is first. Like, what do you prefer or how do you prefer to learn? If you're someone who prefers to have more structure, like a class type of environment, um, or if you even could do things that are self-guided. So it's not necessarily like a class where we have a syllabus, we have to do things this, 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 and this date. Um, there are certification programs you can do. Uh, there's stuff for Microsoft Office. There's things for Google Suite and cloud computing. Um, one of the things that I've read, which always sticks with me from an ALA magazine was um, a little blurb that they had on professional development. And there were some librarians who did get certifications in these types of uh, programs. So if that's of interest to you, that is available. Um, or you might even think about an app development certification plus degree. So uh, the certification that I have, again, it was a six course program. So it took about like the better part of a year. Um, and it was kind of accelerated. So like every week we had to submit something. Uh, we first started learning computer science 101. So you're going to be put into like the course with other people who are probably going to be in systems or going to be in networking. Um, so you, you kind of like learn together. Um, you also have to learn some networking type of stuff in those like general classes, but they're very helpful. Uh, then since then, I went on to learning Visual Basic, then C Sharp, Java. And the last program that I did was on user experience and design. So um, that was the structure for me. It might be pretty similar to others, uh, but you definitely want to take a look at that course or program rather and see what kind of courses that they offer and what programs that you want to learn. If you're good with learning in a group, uh, boot camps and meetups are great. Um, I did meet up once. Uh, and if you are interested in finding like a position uh, and this is why you go to like those particular meetups, uh, they typically, well, I don't want to say typically, but usually you'll find a recruiter who attends these, whether they're virtual or in person. So uh, you can use a meetup app or go on their website to see when people meet up. And uh, a lot of the times you might even find some meetups that are events um, that are self-guided, well, not self-guided, but um, like kind of self-governed. They have like their own people who volunteer their time to do this. Um, there's a lot of stuff there for uh, particular programming languages. Um, I went to a SQL meetup a couple of times as well. Um, and there was a recruiter there uh, pretty much every time, whether it was virtual or in person. Um, and it's good to also just go there too, even if like you're not necessarily thinking about a new position or you don't have experience in those areas, you just say, hey, like I just want to see what's going on here, um, you know, what, what's up and coming. Um, boot camps are also good too. Uh, I heard that it's usually the best way to learn that's like more realistic to how uh, I would say most um, entities work because a lot of boot camps end with a project in which you're going to have to collaborate with other people. And um, you're going to have to learn how to do uh, like time management stuff. Trello is like a very popular type of uh, project management uh, online board system, like a bulletin board system, um, and where people have to be uh, assigned to different things where you have to divide uh, amongst yourself, like what you want to do. And if you can do it by yourself, of course, of course there's Codecademy, uh, Udemy, which I don't have on here, but I'll make sure that's there before the slides become available. Uh, Udemy, I actually used for um, a couple of things. Uh, I did one for Python and I also did one for Linux. Uh, so that's also really helpful. Or you could also take webinars on um, user experience and design. And uh, sometimes the meetups will have these webinars are open to the public where they are not necessarily from a self-governed type of group, but from people working in certain areas. Like I did a few on user experience and design and it was like a a firm or like a consultation company uh, that hosted it. So you do have to sort of deal with the sales pitch and maybe a couple emails after you go, but they are helpful. All right, I'm gonna try to speed run through the rest of this. Uh, so uh, what you need for my job. Oh, actually this is the last slide, so we're on time. Uh, so, and if there are programmers in the chat who could probably um, give some other examples of this, um, feel free to do so. Um, I thought that learning Visual Basic and Python just to get logic down, because learning logic in programming um, is very important. There's always going to be new 
programming languages coming out. I mean, C Sharp is based on like C++, which was based on C. And that's just, I imagine in the future, maybe in the next few years or so, they're going to develop um, another like library of a different type of C-based language. Um, Ruby, uh, Ruby on Rails, like those are some newer ones as well. Uh, but Visual Basic is good in terms of like learning how to make loops, how to make conditional statements, uh, variables and the ver difference between variables and constants, um, making like random generators and things like that. And while Python is kind of iffy, I think it's a good one to learn in terms of what's available for self-guided online courses. Uh, white space does matter in Python. So uh, just keep that in mind, but it's very fast. Um, and other things that we need to know when we're working with Evergreen in general is Perl, um, some sort of like HTML or even like HTML5, if you've uh, learned that. And I learned both like in high school. Uh, Angular, I forgot to also put Jang Angular JS, uh, Bootstrap, CSS. Um, those are a few that come off the top of my head and what you'll need to know in terms of like uh, programming. If you really want to at least get the full scape of uh, using Evergreen and fiddling around with it. Uh, learn how to use a terminal. Uh, starting with file organization is great. Um, so that's like the Linux side of things. And uh, again, I think Udemy has a lot of really good Linux courses. Um, there's so many like helpful things online too. And if people have other uh, suggestions, you could drop them in chat. Uh, but learning how to use a terminal was uh, pretty big for me. I did not know how to use a terminal. And my first project was to install uh, Evergreen, <laughs> the Zool version onto my computer. And then we just went to the web client version like shortly afterwards. So um, I definitely learned a lot through that, even when it came down to just like copying commands. But um, the more that like you start to work with your own files and learn how to navigate your directory through terminal, um, that would be very helpful. Uh, and lastly, SQL, W3Schools, um, which has been mentioned in Jessica's presentation, I think on the millability with reports. Um, that was actually the place that I went to to learn basic SQL when I was doing the computer, uh, one of, the computer science 101 course. And also learn about open source. Um, when I learned things about the app development program, it was pretty much like a lot of corporate stuff like C-sharp um, using Visual Studio, not code, but like Visual Studio, the suite. Um, and then like MySQL and stuff like that, which a lot of corporate um, places use. And maybe like some uh, open source does uh, do too. But I never like really looked into open source communities until I started working with Evergreen. Uh, but I guess just to put this in closing, and I don't have a closing slide, so I'll stop sharing here. Or I'll just keep this up for now so you could enjoy the uh, Star Wars comic. Um, you don't necessarily, I think a lot of the times it's, we think about um, people who in programming, they know how to do this, this, and this. Um, like look at all the things that they can do. Like they speak in binary or something. Like we think we try to like put people like on this like pedestal where really it's all of us trying to like learn something each time. Like a new error is gonna pop up that we've never seen before. Um, there was like a weird like NPM install thing that happened that like we had to like figure out on the fly. Like new things are just gonna happen and you can't be completely knowledgeable about stuff. Just like librarianship, you're always gonna have to evolve your skill set in some way. Um, so I think as long as you're enthusiastic and really interested in the things that you're doing, you could really get involved. And, you know, I, I'm like just my third year in, I'm already, uh, really involved in the documentation interest group or dig. Um, I've done a couple of presentations in the new devs committee. And sometimes like I said things that I didn't know about. And some people said, oh, well, you could do it this way, et cetera. Um, so don't worry about making those mistakes. They're just going to happen. Uh, if you do have any hesitation, because I, I understand programming, especially if you want to get into it, um, could be very overwhelming. There's a lot of things to choose from, a lot of things to learn, and we just feel like we don't have all the time to master it, but you don't have to master every single thing. Um, all right, so that's basically it for me. I just want to thank you for your time. Uh, and here we go. <laughs> I'm just looking through the chat right now, and Blake's comment already made me laugh. Stall Evergreen, have a few laughs. There were laughs, there were tears. Uh, we're actually more suspicious uh, when there are no errors on the first try. I uh, agree with that for sure. I remember I was, I'm was i running through um, an upgrade of 3.9 on the test server. And when I was doing a whole bunch of diff files, only one thing came back with the syntax error and I just stared at my terminal going like, 
oh, there's something wrong with this. <laughs> there has to be like something else uh, going on. But yeah, baptism by Zool. Um, okay, let's see. So yes, a parallel between reference interview and help desk ticket. Yeah, that, that's a really uh, good part. I think that was at the Data Work 101. Um, so if you have not seen that, that will be available. Um, Chris Sharp does like uh, have a nice little parallel between the reference desk interview and help desk tickets. Um, Poster syndrome, sympathy, great. And I have excellent memes, I, I appreciate that. Well, in any case, uh, yeah, I hope that, uh, you know, maybe for those of you who, um, you know, are thinking about getting more involved in Evergreen at that capacity, um, maybe I could give you like a little bit of a push to go somewhere. Um, just like last time on Tuesday, if you join me, I'm going to moderate the next session. Uh, so Katie, do you want to hang out for a bit? <laughs> just kind of, a, all right, you'll, you'll respond when you can. But um, in any case, what we have next <laughs> there you are. Okay. Yeah. Here I am. What? We yeah, we have a while. Um, people can join the reports interest group already in progress if anyone is interested in that. And but do stick around for the Evergreen project and developer updates at three. Yes.